Do you take resveratrol, fisidine, and quercetin? If so, how? You probably have heard that Dr. David Sinclair suggests that mixing those supplements with the food that we eat, especially with fat, yogurt or olive oil. One of my subscribers asked me about a proof and verification of that idea. He says, I haven't seen a scientific study that confirmed the mix of the fat idea. Only the last two months, I've covered over 200 studies of resveratrol. What have I seen about that subject? Is there any evidence that mixing resveratrol with olive oil or fat before we eat it actually improves the efficacy in absorption? Let's cover today a few studies, and we'll also see a clip from Dr. David Sinclair speaking about his experiment with fat and resveratrol, and you're also going to get my take, my juicy take, sorry, my fatty take about how to take resveratrol, which which foods, and how. And how can you be sure that you achieve the results from your supplement? If that sounds good, let's start. Welcome to the Wellness Messiah podcast. I'm your host, Riman. When we talk about resveratrol, fisetin, and quercetin, there are two aspects of the bioavailability and absorption and function in the body from the time we take it. The first one is the basic biochemistry. What's the bioavailability from the time we take the supplement? And does it mix with whatever we eat or take it with? The second aspect of that is the actual results in clinical studies. What mixture of those supplements achieve the best results? Let's begin with the basic chemistry and biochemistry. The first aspect is solubility. How will resveratrol and other polyphenols mix with water? Well, resveratrol is the equivalent of brick dust. It's, it's really insoluble. If you put it in a glass of water, it'll fall to the bottom. So what you need to do is, we found in both mice and humans, mix it with some food. You can use yogurt, you can use that kind of olive oil, that kind of oily food and it will dissolve. It's hydrophobic. This is the problem. It's scared of water. Sinclair said that resveratrol is afraid of water. We call this in biochemistry hydrophobic. This is why it's going to form these little granules when you put it in water. One thing is sure here is that resveratrol is not water soluble. However, does it mix so well in fat? I'm quoting from this study. Polyphenols are in between these two examples, fat and water, and range from the water soluble flavanols to the much less water-soluble flavanols. However, the latter are usually glycosylated in foods, which increases their water solubility. So in essence, those polyphenols and resveratrol uh, specifically doesn't mix beautifully in fat as well. It's kind of in between molecule. And if you're gonna try and mix it with olive oil, you're gonna see the same result as well. Still, Staking resveratrol with food that has fat in it seems to increase absorption. This is about quercetin, but resveratrol has a similar structure. This study measured quercetin in pigs. Pigs have similar digestive system to us humans, so this makes this study valuable. I'm quoting from this study. The highest absorption of quercetin was for the 15% fat-containing diet compared to 3% fat-containing control diet. A 32% fat diet, however, gave no further bioavailability increase. So this tells us that food with fat improves absorption, and it's not necessarily needs to be uh, mixed in pure fat. So something about the combination of fat and the food that we eat, that really gives the absorption a boost to these polyphenols, specifically here with quercetin. And indeed, Dr. David Sinclair has something to say about that from experiment on his body. Let's see what he says. So we've done a lot of studies on resveratrol as of others since. And we know that from, we found out early, I was one of the first people to take a high dose for resveratrol. Uh, and when, when we included it with food, the levels in my blood went up fivefold. Uh, and so you wanna have something in there. If you just drink it with water, it's not gonna get through. So in other words, Sinclair said that he tried it on himself and taking resveratrol with food increased fivefold the amount of resveratrol in his blood. It didn't say anything specific about physically mixing it with fat. So I'm not completely sure what exactly he did uh, when he did this uh, self-experiment on his body. (music) 
It's not completely clear how fat improves the absorption. It could be that increases the transit time. What do I mean by that is you may have certain pathways, certain doors in your digestive system where resveratrol in those polyphenols can access. If you just take it on empty stomach, it just flow quickly through the gut and only few of those molecules have the chance to get absorbed within your body. However, when you take it with food, it's going to be absorbed more slowly, gives resveratrol in other polyphenols, more time to open and close doors, entering essentially through the same doors without competing with one another, to have more time to go through the doors in your gut. So we covered fat in food. My little experiment showed better uh, solubility of resveratrol and other polyphenols in alcohol over fat. And indeed, in certain studies, they show that the polyphenols have a better solubility in alcohol over fat even. Let's see this study, also in quercetin. A single dose of quercetin was dissolved in grape juice, white wine, and vegetable juice. A significantly higher twofold plasma quercetin was obtained after the administration of quercetin in white wine compared to the other matrices. 30% ethanol or more showed an absorption enhancing effect. Whether 14% alcohol in red wine is sufficient, I'm not sure, but taking resveratrol with red wine or mixing your polyphenols with red wine and taking it with a meal makes sense, a meal with fat, of course. Now, there is another question. If you just take resveratrol or those polyphenols on empty stomach, do you get zero impact? Let's read from this study. When resveratrol is consumed orally, 70 to 80% is quickly absorbed via passive diffusion in the intestines. Another report shows that at least 70% of resveratrol is absorbed after a single 25 milligram dose. So that's very interesting. 70% of resveratrol is absorbed via diffusion in the gut. Now, why that matters? Because it says that resveratrol doesn't need a chaperone to carry it with it to inside the body. The resveratrol doesn't need a pump and it doesn't need a chaperone or a carrier to carry it inside the body. So this suggests absorption even without fat and without alcohol, but probably to a lower extent. In other words, taking resveratrol on empty stomach just means that you're gonna get less of it. You're not gonna get zero absorption. The main issue for me with taking resveratrol on empty stomach, the dose of resveratrol, if I'm going to show in the next video in on the subject is critical to the benefits of resveratrol. And when I take on empty stomach, I'm not sure, maybe I'm gonna get 60%, 70%, 80% of the uh, milligrams I've taken, I'm not sure. And the studies are not clear about that. So to be safe, I think it makes sense to take resveratrol, maybe with a bit of red wine in a fatty meal. Now, this leads me to the second aspect, which is what have we seen with clinical studies? What about longevity studies in animals that achieve the best benefits? Those studies include one of the two scenarios, taking resveratrol with food, not necessarily mixing it with fat, but taking it with, with food, just like Sinclair said he has done himself, what we've heard today. And the second is taking resveratrol in red wine, which has very good benefits in humans. And in this situation, resveratrol and other polyphenols are dissolved in red wine, in alcohol, in ethanol. So the bottom line is this. There is no evidence that mixing resveratrol in olive oil or in yogurt actually improves the absorption or the efficacy of resveratrol. But taking resveratrol with food, with some fat, or and mixing it with a bit of alcohol makes sense and improves absorption. And it would seem that those polyphenols have the best solubility in alcohol actually over fat, but we don't have to do that in order to achieve results. So as a backup plan and covering both of those bases, why not just take resveratrol with red wine, creating a polyphenol synergy with the polyphenols in the red wine, and take that red wine and resveratrol within a meal that has a bit of fat, whether mixing it in the red wine 
or just drinking the capsule with a meal with red wine. Seems like the safest bet to me. To end this, let me tell you that I'm still working on this mind-blowing resveratrol project based on Sinclair's own study that showed that low resveratrol worked better for longevity. At this point, I've been going over 200 studies on resveratrol to be as accurate as I can be, and this is why I'm a bit slow with this content, because of this very time-consuming, extremely hard-thinking project. Until then, stay young, stay healthy, and take your supplements with the right foods.